Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello, this is Dr. Christy, Professor, Department of CSC, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. In this session, we are going to see about pre vertex pitting problem with greedy approach. First, we will see what is greedy approach. Greedy algorithms are used to solve optimization problems. Optimization problems are problems wherein we would like to find the best of all possible solutions. The greedy approach helps us in constructing a solution for a problem through a sequence of steps wherein each and every step is considered to provide a partial solution. This partial solution is extended progressively in order to get a final complete solution. Now, let us see one example for this greedy approach. Example I have taken as traveling salesperson problem. Now, you will be given n sets of inputs. Given an input, now the traveling salesperson has to start from one particular location and he will have to reach the destination. So, for solving any problem under greedy approach, we will be given some inputs and some set of constraints will be given. For this problem, the constraint that is given us the person is starting from one location and he has to reach the destination. Now, for reaching the destination, there are various solutions. The person can start from starting location, he can go through city A, city C and reach the destination or he can come to city B and then go to city F and reach the destination or he can go to city B and straight away he can go to the destination. And the option is the traveling salesperson may go to city D, then from there he can go to city E, city F and go to the destination. So, these solution we call as the feasible solution. Then for solving a problem, there will be some objective function. The objective function for this particular problem is we need to reach the destination with minimum distance. So, when you are seeing the minimum distance, now among city A, city B and city D, now city B is having the minimum distance which is 10 kilometers. So, that is why at each and every step, the algorithm is making a choice that offers the greatest immediate benefit. So, this is what we call as the greedy uh, choice and the decision also now we are making based on the current information and we do not worry what will happen in future. At every point, we make a decision that is locally optimal and we hope that it will give a globally optimal solution in future. So, in this case, like we are from the starting location, if you come to city B and city F and if you reach the destination, we will be able to reach the destination with minimum cost. So, that is the final optimal solution. And we will see one more example. Now, this is a traveling salesperson problem. We are given four cities. We need to start from the city A. And we need to visit all the cities once and finally, we need to come back to the starting point. So, that is why now for this first the constraint is we are visiting all the cities once and come back to the starting point. So, for this we are getting six various solutions are there. These solutions we call as the feasible solutions. That is we start from city A, go to city B, city C, D and go to A or from A, we come to B, we come to D, we come to C and then we can go to A or from A, we can come directly to C, we can go to B, D and A or from A, we can come to C, we can go to D, we can go to B and then we can come to A or we can come to A, then D, B, C and A or A, D, C, B and A. These are the various options. So, from this, what is the objective function? Objective function is the one which gives a minimum cost. So, that is why in this we are, we are getting two optimal functions, the solution 2 and solution 4. They are giving the optimal solution. So, that is why if there are four cities, now the various possible combinations of feasible solutions are 6. So, that is why we are saying the total tour is n minus 1 factorial. Four cities are there. So, we are getting three factorial that is six possible combinations. So, the in general the efficiency is order of n minus 1 factorial. This is how the greedy approach works. Now, we will see the generalized algorithm for the greedy approach. So, in this greedy approach we are having an array A which is having n inputs and initially 
the solution is set to null that is it is set to empty now each and every elements from this array we are taking one by one and initially we are selecting one element from the set and let it be x now we are checking whether this x will give a feasible solution or not if x is giving a feasible solution then we can include this one in the solution set so like this all the n values we are selecting one by one and we need to see whether it will give you a valid solution or not if it gives a valid solution then it will be included in the solution if not we will be ignoring that now we will see the various applications of this greedy strategy optimal solution the first one is minimal spanning tree then single source shortest path problem simple scheduling problem and huffman coding Similarly, the various approximations are traveling salesperson problem, knapsack problem and tree vertex splitting problem. Now, in this uh, video, we are going to see about the tree vertex splitting problem. Tree vertex splitting pro problem is a distribution network in which we will be sending signals from one source to another destination. So, when you are sending signals from one source to another destination, some loss will happen uh, during the process of this transmission. So, there is some level called as a tolerance level. So, the, if the signal loss is going beyond the tolerance level, then the network will not function. So, that is why we need to find where, where the loss is happening and if the loss is happening beyond the tolerance level, in that place we need to identify and we have to keep some boosters. Okay, that is the problem. So, to model this problem, we are using a weighted network. In this weighted network, we are using some the nodes represents the various receiving stations and the edges represent the various transmission lines. Now, in the process of transmission, some loss is happening. This loss only we are finding as the delay in sending the signals from one node to another node. Now, the node network may not be able to tolerate the losses, so that is why we need to find the tolerance level and if the, toler if the delay is uh, exceeding the tolerance level, then that is the place in which we have to keep the boosters. So, in the tree vertex splitting problem, we will be given a network and a tolerance level. So, we have to find in which place we need to place the boosters. So, the network is defined by a tree T which is having V, E, W where this V is a set of vertices, E is a set of edges and W is the weighting function for the edges. Finding the tree vertex splitting problem, this can be done in two steps. The first step, we need to find the delay of the node. The delay of the node is found using a formula D of U is equal to maximum of V belong to C of U d of v plus w of u comma v where this v indicates the various child nodes of the current node w we need to find the delay for node u means we are finding the child nodes the child nodes are represented as v second step is we need to check whether the delay is within the tolerance level the tolerance level is identified by a symbol called delta so that is why we are finding the delay for a node u means if u is having a parent called as v, if d of u plus weight of v comma u is greater than delta, then we are saying we have to split the node. Means this is the no place in which we have to keep the booster and then we are assigning d of u is equal to 0. We will see how to solve this problem. So, we are given a weighted directed tree. So, weighted directed tree means now we are sending signals from one source to destination means some signal loss is happening. So, the signal loss is given in the edges and the tree is given in directions. So, that is why we are calling as a weighted directed tree and the tolerance level is given as delta which is equal to 5. Now, first we need to identify all the leaf nodes. In this case, node 7, node 8, node 5, node 9 and node 10, they are the leaf nodes. So, all the leaf node we are setting the value as 0. Now, we need to find the delay for node 4. Delay is nothing but the loss. So, the delay only we are calling as D of U. For which node we are finding the delay, that node we are calling as U. So, D of U we have to find out. When you are finding the delay for node 4, we need to see what are the child nodes. The child nodes are node 7 and node 8. These child nodes we call as V nodes. So, that is why according to the formula, maximum of V belonging to 
child nodes of u. The child nodes of u are node 7 and node h. So that's why the formula says initially what is the value of d of d? d of v, d of v means d of 7 is 0 plus weight from node 4 to node 7. Node 4 to node 7 weight is 1. So that's why now the formula says it is 0 plus 1. Maximum of d of 7 is 0 plus weight from node 4 to node 7 is 1. And next one is node 8. d of 8 is 0 and weight from node 4 to node 8 is 4. So that's why 0 plus 1 and 0 plus 4. So the maximum among these two is 4. Okay. So now we got the value of d of 4 which is 4. Second condition is we need to see whether we need to keep booster at this particular stage. So the formula is d of 4 plus weight from this u to its particular parent node. Parent node at this particular instant we are calling as node v. So now we are finding the weight from node 2 to node 4 it is 2. So that is why this formula d of 4 is 4 plus weight from node 2 to node 4 which is 2. Now the value is 6. Now in the problem we are given the delta value is 5. We are finding 6 is greater than 5. So we need to split the node. So how do you split the node? We need to split the node. So node 4 is split into out node and in node. From out node we are taking node 7 and node 8 and in node we are taking rest of the nodes. So like this we are splitting. Then next one. So that is the output we have got from the previous uh, stage this tree. Now we need to split node 2. The delay for node 2 is the delay of previous node 4 in node plus weight from node 2 to node 4. So delay of uh, node 4 i is uh, 0 plus weight from node 2 to node 4 i we are getting as 2. So we are getting the delay of node 2 as 2. Now we need to see whether we need to split this particular node or not. So that is why d of 2 the formula says d of 2. So weight from this current node to its parent node. So that is the weight of 1 to 2 its value is 4. So again we are getting 2 plus 4 is 6 which is greater than the delta value. So we need to split the node. So node 2 also we need to split. So how we are splitting node 4 already we have split. Now we are splitting node 2 also. From 2 out node we are getting 4 in node and 2 in node we are connecting with the node 1. Now so left hand side is now over. Now we will come to the right hand side. Right hand side we need to check for the node 6. Node 6 is having 2 child nodes node 9 and node 10. Then again we are applying the same formula d of 9 is 0 plus weight from node 6 to node 9 is 2 or d of 10 is 0 plus weight from node 6 to node 10 is 3. So from this maximum among 2 or 3 the value value is 3. So now we are getting the delay for node 6 is 3. Now we need to see whether we are going to split this node or not. So that is why delay of node 6 plus weight of this particular node plus its corresponding parent node. So 3 plus 3 is 6. Again we are seeing it is greater than the delta value. So we need to split even node 6. So after splitting node 6 we are getting the diagram like this. From 6 out node we are getting node 9 and node 10 and from node 6 i we are getting the remaining vertices. So this is the diagram which you are getting after splitting node 6. Now we are getting only one vertex that is vertex 3. We will see how to split the vertex 3. So in the vertex 3 there are two child nodes, child node 5 and node 6. Again we need to find the delay of node 5. So that is d of 5 is 0 plus weight from node 3 to node 5 is 1. Then delay of node 6 is 0, weight from node 3 to node 6 is 3. So from this we are getting the maximum value is 3. Now we need to see whether we are going to split this node or not. So d of 3 plus weight from node 1 to node 3 we need to find out that is 5. The tolerance level is also given as 5 and the current value is also 5. It is not greater than the tolerance level, it is equal to the tolerance level. So we need not split the node. That is the final conclusion. Then finally we are having only the root node. So no need to find the delay for the root node because this is the starting location from which we are transmitting the signals. So the problem stops here. So from this finally the maximum number of boosters we have to keep is 3 at node 2, node 4 and node 6. 
and the overall time complexity of this algorithm is theta of n. So, that is about the tree vertex splitting problem. Then we will see the algorithm implementation of this problem in the next video session. Thank you.